Action. Go. Hello and welcome to our final COVID uh, disco class, which is drawing in isolation for Saturday in the time of COVID with Maureen Hanson at William Robinson's fine nest here at Old Government House, Queensland at QUT. And the one of the most beautiful acts of serendipity that happened this week was I was talking to uh, Sarah at William Robinson Gallery and I mentioned to her that um, when I was at art college with William Robinson in the late 80s, there was an incredible painting by Roy Churcher. Now this beautiful painting by Roy Churcher, husband of Betty Churcher, who was a director of the National Gallery, um, is available for us to see right here. And it had such a great influence on me as a still life painter 30 years ago. And QUT is so on the ball that we're right here in front of the very painting that inspired me to paint for 30 years. So um, thank you Roy Churcher, thank you William Robinson, and I'm going to show you how to Draw in a time of COVID for sanity. And if you don't want to look at people anymore, you can use fruit. So um, we've got some delightful cut lemons and uh, passion fruit, limes here. The thing I most remembered about Roy Church's picture was something of a blue outline. Now I see the real thing. Um, there's a hint of it there, but let me teach you the basics again. We car, 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 pick up the pencil like a stick and we place the mark on the surface and in doing so you will find your mark that's different to any other human that's ever lived or died on the planet so it it comes from ignoring your brain gluing your eye to the subject that you're drawing and um, placing the mark on the canvas so let's try here we go um, first of all i'm getting the idea of my composition by drawing the outline I'm standing over the top of the plate like Cezanne or Matisse so you can look into the picture and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the curve of this plate, come back in with this one, come back out with that one. So I've started with a simple mark. When I get to here, that's when I hit my big lemon. So I glue my eye to what I'm drawing. I'm, I'm going fast because I've only got 10 minutes but I want you to go really slow because you're teaching your brain a new language. So here's my big fat lemon with its nose pitched to the sky. And when this lemon's gonna help me draw, just like we did with the face, I'm running little measuring lines. So I'm looking and these measuring lines can be joined to make the back of the lemon. So we're coming around here. As I come around this face with the eclipse, there's a part of me that's a bit spooked and believes it might not join up which is quite natural in the creative process. So I'm going back out here and I'll draw that curve and ellipse of the plate. Then I'm spooked it might not join up here. So I'm going to use this lemon to measure what's happening with that curve. When I'm down in here, I'm going to drop. As I come around this curve, that's where the belly of that lemon drops. So some some of you could try drawing on graph paper because it actually, drawing on graph paper is something we did at art college back in uh, the late 80s and it, um, if you rule up pages it helps you uh, explore what the angles are that you're dividing on. But one beautiful thing that Bill always mentioned is it's the sensitivity in your marks and it's the attention that you pay when you're in the process of drawing. So I'm coming up here for the line, which touches the passion fruit, which again touches that lemon. So just lightly coming around, and this is where that back plate fires off. And back here, I've got a sweet little passion fruit, just chilling at the back. And then I'm measuring out to the arc of the, of the plate. So with this down, um, I've got a further bit of a Roy Churcher curl here that comes around there. I'm going to start building yellow into my, um, into my drawing and the white and black from before. But before I start at, um, adding any deep colours, I'm going to start to splash down a bit of paint. So this is gouache, which is um, a really lovely opaque kind of watercolour and um, this is a well-loved palette. So 
We've got our primary yellow in here. It kind of paints that one. This is oh, oh that's a horrible it's... big chunky thumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> hideous to the eye. <laughs> it did look so weird. yeah, I mean it's not really um, something I would dig into, but there we go. We've got that pale lemon colour just with white and yellow. Just dipping into the water just to add a bit of moisture, and we're away. So here. Placing the mark on the surface, we place that colour down. So it's all about just observing nature and just having a look at where the colours are. So here, this is a lot more yellowy. A lot of people are a bit spooked by painting and drawing and the ones that... Um, that uh, excel probably just make a lot more mistakes and probably just a little bit get more gain I think so if we hop in here and we blast that gold down there we're also thinking about the form in the paint so we're thinking that the lemon is not a flat thing so just bringing that mark around the edge don't let that baby drip just running that around there and then um, Coming back up here, it's a bit squarish. Sometimes the thing that's really going to make this lemon stick out, we're also bearing in mind the direction of the mark. Also, once I've got this on the brush, I've got to ask myself where else does this colour occur? So I'm needling in here to my Naples yellow and I'm going inside this passion fruit and just blobbing down some of those lovely warm golds. Okay, so here. I'm using the yellow in with a tiny bit of the green. Oh, did I say tiny? Um, we're going back onto the yellow pure. And we're just going to carve in, even though that seems like a hysterically bright colour, I'm just going to blob it in just the same way that sweet Roy Churcher had a great time placing fresh paint on this surface. So if I was to mix that purple, I'd go hell for leather. And I say, um, you've got to swirl around to make the gouache come alive again. Gouache is somehow better than watercolour because you can reconstitute it. And um, if you swirl around, you can reactivate the colour. One of my patients up at the Wesley said, when I said, you've got to swirl around like a demented rhino, she said, good girls don't swirl. And I've always taken that on board. So here we go, we've got blue here plus the red. So a little bit of water in there to activate that rose. What I'm looking for here is the colour for the passion fruit. And we're using a tertiary colour, which would be brown. But with the passion fruit, you might notice that it's a lot of different colours under there. So just placing that mark, same way we did when we were drawing, placing it. And it's about the sensitivity in the mark making and also rolling that around. A little bit of water to this and I can get a bit of movement in the picture. And up here, we're coming around the edge of that passion fruit. And then we're gonna drop. We're gonna drop to see how, how far down that part goes. Okay, and now I feel it's time for my favorite brush. Um, with these um, items down, I'm going to mix a pale green and just scoot around these chaps. Um, my brush doesn't seem to be big enough. Your favourite brush? My favourite brush? My favourite brush is failing me, so you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because it's just a 10 minute demo, I'm going to bring in mixed media. So the pastel I'm using is a very special pastel. It's over 100 years old, a French pastel that I found in an antique shop. But the beautiful thing is the pigments are very pure. What we're trying to do here, I'm going to layer it down smoothly. Don't use too much. You want to keep a bit of that pastel. I want to keep a bit of the pastel, but since it's 100 years old and it's made it this far, I think it's, it's maybe, maybe it's um, swan song, perhaps. So here we are, going, going around. And importantly, there should be an occasion to use 100 year old dust. I mean, this is definitely mm. it. Importantly, when I get in here. 
an online class. <laughs> That's right, an <laughs> online class. If you're enjoying getting to know your own thinking and defragging, and then most importantly, the reason we're all getting a little bit spare is because we need constructive things to do with our brain, brain. so our brain, not all of us have a brain, but, um, but with our brain, so if we're talking about the shadows on the, um, on the plate, I know I'm using a mild brown here, mm. but um, if we were to oops, pop back into my charcoal, one of the things that helps is if we really accentuate the line where the object touches the ground, and so over here, we're doing the same thing. Um, up here, where these two objects touch, we can force that in under here. It's a little more bluey. So, um, as you can um, tell, um, it's not a very long amount of time to work with colour, but if we... <laughs> oh, if we like... I'm sorry, that was a very um, musical elephant that we had installed. So, if we can just softly work on these and bring that volume around, and of course, what would it be like without the rich colours of, of church here coming around? We've got pale green. Um, pale green. which needs a little bit of blue to deaden it. And we can come up here with this soft, more aqua green and cast that in there. So as you can see, it's quite playful and quite open. I wish I could um, teach you more about it in the time that we have, but I really just want to encourage you to have a play because that's, I think, what we're all missing creatively. And don't judge your work. Um, too harshly at the beginning, just persist and don't just crunkle it up and throw it in the bin because you'll take that long getting to that part again. So mistakes are your best teachers and as we keep going with this beautiful minty plate, you can see that once the shadows come in and this colour hops things forward, we can, um, we can proceed. So I would really love it if you could pick up some fruit at home, maybe it's your favourite pair of shoes and just have a go at drawing them, have a, have a go at drawing the shadows. And we'll just um, freshen up these lemons. Mm. So getting a yellow pastel in there and also noticing that inside that is all really quite, quite golden. almost leaning towards a brown. But then we need the white to sort of pull the lemon rind out of there. We can use our fingers on that older pastel. And also if we have a look at how the, um, the shadow leaves, you probably need to accentuate that shadow. So by rolling a pastel softly, having a look at the angle, perhaps we softly draw up here when it squares. Following the contour of the lemon down here, and lo and behold, time travel has occurred. It's incredible. Here we are at my house because QUT is a very busy campus and we had to get out. So, you're back at my house. I've got to show you the conclusion of fruit picture. And here we are with the cut lemon, the wild white. And you know, the beauty of time travel is that you can sneak in a new little pastel just to demonstrate exactly what you're talking about. So here we've got the white of the lemon rind coming forth, the direction of the mark on the plate.
and the direction to show the volume in the fruits and also their shadows so different shadows this morning because we're crunching days into this this is the joy of covid it's a day cruncher it's a little groundhoggy okay so there's those sweet little lemons little black line here wherever the fruit touches the ground we're going to get a little bit intense there's shadows coming in here the whole process comes together but you can do that at home and now that you've got all the clues over a couple of days you can revel in the joy that is painting and drawing like William Robinson Master of Arts from QUT William Robinson Art Museum and the home of Maureen Hansen fruit party for one Ta -da! It is. Oh my god, I can see my face in it. <laughs> Actually, I can see my face in this golden bird. <laughs> Check out this bird. It's quite the thing. I think. Fuck off! <laughs>